Scientists and archaeologists are constantly making all kinds of incredible discoveries, but some of them are bound to be on the spooky side of things. So today we're talking about some of the creepiest burial sites, mummies, you name it. You'll even get to hear the voice of a 3,000 year old dead guy, so stick around for that. We're going to start things off though with bog body. This is about as unsettling as it sounds. Bog is just such a gross word. Bog. Nothing good could ever come out of a bog. So bog bodies are human remains that were preserved in peat bogs. And peat bogs are these wet swampy areas with a ton of decomposed plant material. The acidic and oxygen deprived conditions in bogs can actually keep bodies from completely rotting away so they actually kind of get mummified. Turns out a lot of ancient cultures in northern Europe used to bury their dead this way in order to preserve them. Archaeologists in Scotland, Ireland, Sweden, the Netherlands have come across some of these eerie bog bodies and some of them are incredibly old. The oldest found to date being the Kaldberg man in Denmark dated to 8000 BCE. Some of the remains are just skeletons now, but there are a surprising amount that are so well preserved you can actually see their facial features, hair, and even their clothes. There's a bit of a mystery about these corpses as well. It's not entirely clear why some bodies would have been buried this way. Some researchers think they were victims of sacrifices or rituals, or they met their end through some ancient form of justice. Up next on the list, we have the unluckiest man. Just look at this poor sap. Uh, this is the remains of a man who clearly met a very unfortunate end during the volcanic disaster in Pompeii. You could say everyone in Pompeii was incredibly unlucky, but this guy, um, whole other level. I mean, as horrific as this must have been, that image of the skeleton crushed under the rock, just with the feet sticking out, it's, it's almost so awful. Kind of goes all the way around to being funny. I don't know, there's something comedically cartoony about it. It's very Bugs Bunny. Uh, when this guy was first discovered though, scientists thought the eruption of Mount Vesuvius had hurled a boulder into the air, crushing him as he attempted to flee. Pretty awful, but it would have been pretty quick, right? I mean, you get crushed by a boulder, uh, you pretty much die instantly, especially if it's your head. Their initial assumption was wrong, though. Scientists removed the boulder only to discover that the guy's skull was still completely intact, so it didn't crush his body like they initially thought. He would have likely died of asphyxiation, which I think would have been a much worse way to go. It would have been a lot slower. So yeah, poor guy. Rukpand Lake. Back in 1942, a forest ranger discovered hundreds of human skeletons at the bottom of this glacial lake. Not just a few, we're talking about a whole bunch of bones. So how did these poor souls end up there? Some say it was a group of pilgrims caught in a sudden and violent hailstorm. Others think it was an army that got caught in the crossfire of some ancient battle and the bodies were dumped in the lake. Then there's the folklore. Locals have about a legendary goddess, Nanda Devi, getting angry and unleashing her wrath on those who dare to trespass her sacred territory. Recent studies have actually revealed that there's not just one event that led to the skeletons at the bottom of the lake though. Different groups of people met their mysterious fate at different times. In 2003, a team from National Geographic retrieved several bones from the lake and discovered that there were actually still small amounts of flesh attached to some of them. I think this lake is just cursed. I'd Stay, stay far away from it. All right, if I ever find myself in Italy, which I really hope I do one day, I gotta add this place to my list of destinations. Capuchin Crypt, Capuchin Crypt in Sicily. This is a burial site, but instead of your typical graveyard where all the bodies are stored underground and out of view, this place has them right out in the open, rows upon rows of skeletons and mummies, all still wearing the clothing of their time, line the walls and tourists can walk through the place and look at them. Located beneath the Capuchin Monastery in Palermo, the catacombs have been in use since the 16th century. They were first intended for the burial of Capuchin friars, but over time many of the local elite wanted to be stored there and started paying to have their remains kept in the crypt when they died. The catacombs are divided into various sections. One of these sections is the Rosalia Lombardo Chapel, named after a two-year-old girl whose body is remarkably well-preserved, eerily so. The bodies are arranged along the walls or just 
displayed in open coffins. It's certainly eerie, but pretty fascinating, especially seeing them still wearing the clothing that would have been common when they died. Just makes you remember that these were real individuals with their own stories, families, and lives, rather than, you know, a tombstone with a name and a bunch of bones six feet underground out of view. Next on the list, we have the discovery of a mass grave containing the remains of 54 Viking men. So in 2009, archaeologists in Dorset were excavating land where a new road was going to be constructed, the Weymouth Relief Road. While this excavation was taking place, they stumbled on this shallow mass grave containing the remains of 54 men who they later realized had been Vikings. They were all decapitated. The bodies had been haphazardly tossed into the grave and the heads had been placed in a pile off to the side. They'd likely attempted a raid on an Anglo-Saxon territory and were unsuccessful, being rounded up and meeting their grisly ends at the hand of a sword. But it was clear that these hadn't been quick, merciless deaths. There were multiple wounds on the men, aside from, you know, their heads having been detached from their shoulders. One skull even had a large hole at the top, meaning it had likely been lobbed off, exposing the man's brain before he died. And one guy had, like, his fingers sliced off. Uh, he likely tried to grab the sword as it was coming down. Pretty awesome. Um, anyway, seemed like a really fun time to be alive back then, doesn't it? All right, we've talked about Vikings, mummies, and uh, an unlucky man. Now let's move on to vampires, or at least people who were believed to have been vampires. Uh, yeah, these folks were pretty unlucky too. Vampire burials have been discovered in various parts of the world. These were basically any burial aimed at preventing the dead from returning from the dead as vampires or revenants. There are of course tons of different beliefs throughout many different cultures, but one reason someone could have come back as a supposed vampire was if they suffered a particularly cruel death or were believed to be like out of their minds when they were alive, for example. The point is, there were all kinds of methods used in order to prevent them from returning from the grave. In some cases, corpses were buried with bricks or stones placed in their mouths. This was believed to prevent the deceased from rising and feasting on the blood of the living. The idea was that the brick or stone would inhibit the vampire's ability to bite and feed because they just wouldn't be able to just take it out for whatever reason. Pretty pathetic attempt there to stop a vampire. Another method involved involved placing a sickle or another sharp object across the throat or waist of the deceased in the grave. This one's pretty obvious. It's a trap! The corpse wakes up, goes to get up, and oops, there goes its head. That, it's a much better plan, I think. In some cultures, bodies were buried with heavy stones placed on top of them. Again, pretty simple idea behind that one. And some burials involve just physically securing the coffin to prevent the supposed vampire from escaping. Nails or other fasteners were used to seal the coffin. Next, we have the recent discovery of plastic rocks. So scientists studying Brazil's Trindade Island, a very important nesting site for green turtles, have made a pretty alarming discovery. Many of the rocks on the island are now intertwined with melted plastic, forming a new type of rock called Plastiglomeritus. Kind of messed up, really shows the extent of human influence on our planet. Fernanda Avalar Santos, a geologist from the Federal University of Parana, and her team conducted chemical tests to identify the types of plastics that were in these rocks. The primary source of pollution they found is fishing nets, which are common debris in Ndaje Island beaches. These nets, which are dragged by marine currents and accumulate on the beach, melt and blend with the natural materials of the beach when temperatures rise. Trindage Island is a crucial conservation spot for green turtles, attracting thousands each year for egg laying. The island is mostly uninhabited, with only members of the Brazilian Navy present, maintaining a base and protecting the nesting turtles. The plastic-infused rocks were discovered in a protected area near the turtle nesting ground. Santos said that this finding is pretty unsettling. The plastic pollution, mismanagement of waste, and garbage in the oceans are now becoming intertwined with geological material. That is really bizarre. Crazy. Next on the list, we have the Necromancer's Cave. How awesome does that sound? How can I not put 
Bottomless Necromancer's Cave. In 2009, archaeologists exploring Toimim Cave in Jerusalem made a really cool discovery. Deep in the cave, they found human skulls, oil lamps, and bronze daggers. Doesn't take an archaeologist to piece together that there were some rituals going on here, but these rituals were more specifically related to necromancy, the art of communicating with the dead. And that I would not have been able to guess. The exact findings included 120 oil lamps, dating back to the late 2nd to 4th century CE. The lamps were intentionally placed in hidden, hard to reach crevices, which seemed to imply they weren't just used to light up the cave. Along with the lamps were weapons like daggers and axe heads, and three human skulls. No other human bones were found. Ancient papyrus scrolls from the same era detailed spells and customs honoring the cave. These included instructions on restraining and sealing the mouths of skulls and raising spirits with skulls. The researchers put together that these spells actually aligned with the artifacts found in the cave. At the time, the cave was thought to be a portal to the underworld. The oil lamps, including the 120 that were discovered, were believed to lure spirits to the realm of the living. All right, ever wanted to know what a mummy sounds like? Well, we're getting pretty close. Just back in 2020, researchers set out to replicate the voice of Egyptian priest Nesaimun, who's been housed in the Leeds City Museum since 1823. So, so how did they recreate the voice of a man who's been dead for 3,000 years? Well, they digitally recreated all his mouth parts and then 3D printed it. That's my simple way of explaining it. Then they used one of those Electro Links voice box things, and what I wanted to talk through like this, and then fed it through the 3D printed mouth, and you get this. Kind of sounds exactly what I picture a mummy sounding like, to be honest. Like, ugh, you know? And finally, we have evidence of people being fed to vicious animals. It's not like that's unheard of in, in history, in the history of our species, but finding physical evidence of this is pretty fascinating. In recent digs in Teotihuacan, the ancient Mesoamerican city in Mexico, archaeologists stumbled upon something pretty wild. Among a bunch of unearthed remains of predatory animals, mostly big cats, uh, were also human bones, which has a pretty dark implication people were fed to these animals. Now, what were these animals being kept for? Likely for sacrificial rituals. So they kept the animals alive for a time by tossing in some very unlucky human beings their way. The question is, were they dead already or were they fed to the animals while they were still alive? Possibly as a form of punishment. With all that said, I've been your host James and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.